Well, good morning, everyone, again. Welcome to another Tabernacle Baptist Church uh, devotion. On our minds this morning, of course, for those who live in the Caffili County Borough area, is the new lockdown which has been imposed. We fully understand the reasons for that, but we also understand the many difficulties and challenges we face as communities as we continue to battle against this terrible virus, COVID-19. And so our thoughts this morning are with our leaders, that you will give them wisdom and understanding, and also with those who are in the health service and all of the social services which are helping us uh, to try to overcome uh, this uh, huge problem that we, not just uh, in Wales, not just in Caffili, but throughout the world, are facing at this time. Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the gift of prayer. And we thank you that we are coming into the presence of a holy God, one who knows us, one who cares about us, one who protects us. And so we come this morning uh, humbly um, confessing that we are sinners, but if we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal saviour, we are saved sinners. We thank you for that from the bottom of our hearts, that even though we are wayward, even though we fail you so often, you love us, you care for us, and even now, uh, you are protecting us. We do lift up this situation with regard to COVID-19. Uh, we are concerned uh, and we just pray uh, for our families and our friends that you will continue to help them and protect them at this time. And help us to be um, your hands and your feet during these difficult Days. We do lift up our doctors and nurses and uh, all in the health service and in our care homes and social services generally. And we do pray especially for our leaders, our political leaders uh, today, those who are working round the clock really to try to um, uh, find a pathway through uh, to some sort of solution to this problem, but we put ourselves in your hands. We trust in you. And so, Father, as we turn to your word this morning, we ask that you will help us and strengthen us. We do think of um, some of our own members and friends who are seriously ill at this time, uh, some in hospital, and we just lift them to you now. You know who they are. We pray that you will bless them and strengthen them and heal them. Uh, but whatever uh, is your will, may it be done in their lives and in the lives of their families. We ask all these things in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. Amen. Uh, this morning, um, I want us to just study uh, a verse that we find in Revelations chapter 2 and verse 17, which reads, Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Who receives it. In uh, Revelations chapter 2, we can see the state of each of the seven churches mentioned. You know what they are? Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. In the period approaching the end of the first century AD. But by studying um, uh, this passage, we can also assess the state of our own walk 
with the Lord Jesus Christ, by looking at what Jesus has to say to each of his churches in this section of his word. And so this morning, we just need to consider some of uh, the background. Pergamon uh, um, is uh, an interesting place, uh, or was an interesting place. It was the political capital of the Roman province of Asia. And when Jesus, um, uh, through the hand of John, uh, wrote to Pergamon, uh, he had this capital city very much in mind. Pergamon was especially known uh, as a center for the worship of gods, many gods, and particularly uh, one god called Asclepios, uh, represented by a serpent. Asclepios was the god of healing and knowledge. And there was a, a medical school um, at his temple in Pergamon. And because of this famous temple to the Roman god of healing, sick and disabled people, a huge number of people who were suffering from such diseases and ailments flocked to Pergamon seeking relief. Uh, and Jesus um, describes himself uh, to the church at Pergamon uh, as having himself a two-edged sword. Um, now, we think of a two-edged sword as a very w a vicious, uh, sharp, uh, threatening weapon. And in a sense, Jesus is uh, going to um, say some very harsh things uh, to these people because of their sin. And, and he wants to cut it away uh, from their hearts and their lives. And so he can't dilly-dally about. Um, he wants to make it absolutely clear um, what they need to do to be restored uh, to a good relationship with him. Um, Jesus says in Revelation 2 that he knows their work. He knows where they live. And he knows that it's a very difficult place uh, to uh, witness to the Christian faith because of all these other, uh, all this idolatry uh, which is going on in that place. It's a dangerous place for Christians to express their faith. And so uh, Jesus, first of all, commends them on staying close to him in keeping the faith. And that's marvellous, isn't it? That That's a real uh, compliment uh, to the church at Pergamon, that despite all of the sinfulness of that city, all of the immoral immorality as well that was surrounding them, they managed to stay close uh, to him through the power of the Holy Spirit. They kept their eyes fixed on Jesus. And you know, Jesus is saying the same thing to us today. He's saying, I know your works. Um, in my case, that means that he knows some of the good that I do, some of the service that uh, I may be providing for him through his local church, but he also knows the bad. He also knows my sinfulness, and he also knows when I fail him regularly. And, and so um, you can't cheat the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to be honest with him, and you have to confess all of your um, sin and weaknesses to him. And you know, when you do that, it's quite amazing how Jesus puts his hand upon you 
and uh, restores you uh, to a uh, much closer time of fellowship uh, with him. So keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. But um, what are the things that he has against the church of Pergamon? Well, he says for a start that some of them are following false doctrine. Uh, they are um, following in the footsteps of teachers who frankly are not uh, telling the truth uh, about themselves or about the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and one of their worst sins, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> excuse me, is that they not only they allowed such teaching to continue. They tolerated such teaching. And that's a big challenge for us today. If we are belong to a church or churches which um, are promoting a false gospel and we allow it to continue, that's a big sin. And uh, that is a really putting a nail as it were, into the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for each and every one of us on the cross of Calvary. And, and so there's a warning there, that two-edged sword comes down harshly and says, cut away any false doctrine. Um, and there, are, there were others who uh, were living who were compromising themselves by the way that they lived. Uh, they professed to be Christians, but they were still not in truth, giving up some of those old sinful ways. And that reminds us of us, doesn't it? Uh, we need to cut away, or we need Jesus to cut away those old habits uh, uh, that we have. And then Jesus, that tells the church of Pergamon what he wants them to do. It says in um, verse 16 of Revelation chapter 2, Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. We need to repent. It's a simple word, uh, but it's uh, so important. It's not just saying sorry but it's a heartfelt grieving over the wrongdoing and sinfulness uh, in our lives. And then, the second part of the meaning, and then turning our back on such behavior, on such attitudes, uh, and keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. So, the, the call is to be, um, not to continue in the old sinful ways. And then uh, there's a reward, and that's what we read in verse uh, 17. It says, I will give uh, some of the hidden manna. I will also give uh, that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. You see, um, Jesus does provide the bread of heaven uh, to us, doesn't he? He, you know, we feed on him. Uh, he had his body broken for us and his blood shed for us on the cross of Calvary that we might be saved from the punishment of sin, which is death and eternal separation from God. So he feeds us. Uh, and, and also it says here that he gives us a stone, a white stone. Um, it, it's interesting if you read some of the um, historical um, research uh, into a biblical text, you'll see that a, a white stone could mean a number of things. It could mean an invitation to a wedding. It could mean um, a symbol of conquest uh, to a great soldier. 
um, it, it, it was a victor it was a sign of love uh, for a person. So a white stone was a, a something of great privilege uh, to receive. Uh, and also um, we read, and on the stone, a new name will be written. Uh, uh, and God is giving us a new name. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, married couples have um, pet names for each other, don't they? Uh, because their, their relationship is so close. And God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new name, a special name, which symbolizes that very close relationship that we have uh, with Jesus. And that relationship is not temporary. Um, it, it will go on, not even to the, uh, it will not even finish when this earthly life is over, but we will go on into eternity. And so, although Jesus um, criticizes uh, some of the actions of the church in Pergamon, uh, he also praises them for staying with the faith, sticking with the faith. And he says there is a great reward coming. And that's what we have to look forward to today. Um, whatever this world throws at us, and it's throwing a lot at the moment, um, we can look forward to that wonderful day when either Jesus comes or we will go to be with him in glory. May God bless you. And if God has been speaking to you this morning, I wonder whether you would like to give your heart to him. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. If God, um, uh, if you want God uh, to come into your heart and life, why don't you pray this prayer with me now, sincerely? I'm going to pray it and you can say the words after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Well, if you've sincerely prayed that prayer this morning, praise the Lord. God bless you. Tell others of that decision. Um, seek out those who belong to your to a local gospel preaching church. Tell the pastor, tell the leaders, and they will be delighted to, to help you and to love you and nurture you in the faith. Same applies if you live in the Newbridge area. You're more than welcome to get in touch with us at Tabernacle Baptist Church. We're right in the high street in the middle of the village. And uh, Pastor Peter Cho and any of the leaders, again, will be thrilled if you um, contact them and tell them that you uh, have given your heart and your life or um, also if you have restored uh, you have a restored you were backsliding backsliding but now you have a restored relationship with jesus they will be delighted to help you so have a good morning god bless you all amen